Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to plot uh, Bode plots. So what a Bode plot is, it's the, uh, the separation, so it's two plots actually, of the magnitude of the frequency response of a system and the phase of a frequency response of a system. So we're going to show you how to do that for any given transfer function, but specifically this guy here, which uh, is S plus 10 times S plus 200 divided by S plus 20 squared times S plus 1,000, and we already factored it because just looking at that all multiplied out, you probably wouldn't be able to realize that very quickly. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is get this in the correct form, and that form is where we have a 1 as the constant in each of these terms, and we pull everything else out. So to keep this equality, we have uh, S, and then we have to pull out a 10 from this term. So that'll be S over 10 plus 1. And same thing here, we'll have S over 200 plus 1. And so we pulled out a 200 from here, a 10 here. So we have to keep a 2,000 out here. So that's our rewritten numerator. And what this tells us is because we have a 1 here and a 10 underneath here, that 10 is one of our break frequencies. That's the frequency where things happen in the Bode plot. Whether it be a, an increase in magnitude or a change in phase, it's where things, it's the points of interest. So let's continue with this for the bottom here. So for the bottom, we'll get S over 20 plus 1 squared. And so we just have to remember that we pulled two 20s out of this. And we have S over 1,000 plus 1. And so we pulled out 1,000 and we pulled out 400. So that should be 400,000. So the part over here is fine, but let's see if we can simplify this. So we have 2, 1. So what it ends up being is just 1 over 200. So this over here is the starting gain for our system. So for frequencies much smaller than all of the frequencies in here, so things much, much smaller than 10, about 10 times smaller than 10, uh, our gain's about 1 over 200. So the other thing about the Bode plot graphs is that they're graphed on a log-log scale. So that means that the omegas here, so we have 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, or a log base 10 scale uh, for omega. Uh, and the similar scale down here. And the magnitude of h of omega is plotted in decibels. So if you don't know the conversion to decibels, if you have a gain, the gain in decibels is equal to 20 times log 10 of your gain in non-decibels. So our gain here, our starting gain, is 1 over 200. So we have to do that very quickly. So our starting gain in decibels is equal to 20 log 10 of 1 over 200 or 200 to the negative 1. So we can just bring that negative out front there. And what we should get, hopefully I did this right, is negative 46.02 decibels. So this is our baseline. I'm just going to say that that's equal to A and we have for instance our starting line here A. So that means for all frequencies much much smaller than 10 we have a gain of four, negative 46 decibels. So let's just bring out what our break frequencies are. So I'll write that as omega underscore b. And 
I'm going to write a positive and negative next to these things, but that the positive means it's a zero, and the negative will mean it's a pole. So I, I like to write them all on the same line because you'll see later, but so we have a positive 10 and negative 20, another negative 20, a positive 200, and a negative 1,000. And so remember that the positives and negatives just mean poles and zeros, with negatives meaning poles and positives meaning zeros. Because positive and negative frequencies are exactly the same things. So now that we have all this information, we have our base gain and we have what our break frequencies are, we can start part plotting the Bode plot. So the first thing we do is we say, and we're going to be doing the approximate version, so that means that the actual Bode plot will not look exactly like this, there will have to be some corrections, but this gives us a good enough idea of what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is we have our gain A of 46 all the way up until our first break frequency at 10. At our first break frequency at 10, it's a pole. So what happens here is that we start with a positive slope going up. Uh, and so this will be about 20, about here. We go up with a positive slope, and the slope of this line, whenever you encounter a pole, or you encounter a zero in this case, uh, your slope changes by 20 decibels per decade. So this slope here should be 20 dBs per decade. And this slope influence will happen for all of the frequencies greater than the break frequency. So, for instance, if I now encounter a pole, like I would at 20, the, ne the negative 20 decibels of the pole is going to cancel out the positive 20 decibels of the zero that we encountered beforehand. So that would make the slope zero. But because it was s over 20 plus 1 squared, we have the instance where it's not negative 20 decibels per decade, but negative 40 decibels per decade. So, for instance, because this is 20 decibels per decade, at 20 it switches to minus 20 decibels per decade. Until we encounter a new polar zero. So this here is minus 20 dB per decade. So the next break frequency we encounter is at, uh, I'm, did I miss one here? No, okay. So we have, the next one is at 200. So, and it's a zero. So what will happen then is at 200, which we'll say is about here. Hopefully I'm guessing the log scale correctly. Uh, it's about here. So this will be a, because it's a zero, is going to gain 20 decibels per decade in slope, we're at negative, so what happens is it flattens out. We go to zero decibels per decade, and I'm not going to write the slope there because that should be obvious. Um, and that will continue until we hit our next break frequency, which is at about 1,000. And so at 1,000, we get a pole, so that's an influence of negative 20 decibels per decade, and then we have nothing else after that. So it will go on continuing to decrease 20 decibels every decade for all frequencies higher than 1,000. So this is the approximate Bode plot of the frequency response, the magnitude of the frequency response uh, of that filter. So obviously there would need to be some corrections, which I'll talk about later, but for now let's move on to the phase. So the phase operates in a very similar way, um, where a, instead of having a pole be negative 20 decibels per decade, and a zero being uh, positive 20 decibels per decade, a pole is now minus 45 degrees per decade, and a zero is now positive 45 degrees per decade. But the difference is, Unlike how up here, where once we encountered a break frequency, it 
influenced us for the rest of the time. The difference here is that a pole and a zero will only influence the phase of the, of the Bode plot or of the response for one decade before and one decade following. So that would mean that we have to consider the decades before and the decades after and how the, this influence will work. So our first break frequency, let's just jump straight in. Um, our first break frequency is 10. And one decade before that is one. So it would just be one less um, power. So this is 10 to the zero here. Uh, the phase response is zero up until that point. And at that point, we end up with a positive 45 degrees per decade influence. So it starts to go up at about 45 degrees per decade. Uh, draw a little slope in here and have it be 45 degrees per decade. So that doesn't last very long until we get to be a decade before our 20, our 220s here. A decade before 20 is 2. And so at about this point here, which is 2, we get an influence of minus 45 and then another minus 45. So this goes from positive 45 degrees per decade straight to negative 45 degrees per decade. And so that will continue until we encounter another break frequency or leave the range of this one. So the range of this one is this will go up to 100. These will go up to 200. And this one will start at 20. So we don't have to worry about anything until we get to 20, which is about here. So this will continue on until about there. So at 20, we end up, well, you know what, maybe I should write this very quickly. So this one here, this one's range is 1 to 100. This one's range is 2 to 200. Same for these two. This one's range is 20 to 2,000. And this one's range is 100 to 10,000. Maybe that will help you see better. So at 20 here, we encounter another zero. So what effect that has is that it is going to flatten this out because it's a zero and it's going to add a positive 45 degrees per decade to the negative 45 degrees per decade currently happening. So it's going to make it zero all the way up until we get to 100. Once we're at 100, the influence from this zero drops off. So what we have to do is this positive 45 degrees per decade is no longer influencing us. And not only that, but the negative 45 degrees per decade from this 1000 will start. So the net is that we lose 45 and then we gain another negative 45. So we go from zero to minus 45 degrees, minus 90, excuse me, minus 90 degrees per decade until we get to about 200, which is about there. So that's our next point of interest. And so this here is minus 90 degrees per decade. Once we get to 200, we lose the two negative influences from the poles at 20, and we gain nothing else. So what happens is this flattens out again. So we go back to being flat. And after 200, the next point of interest is 2,000. So nothing is going to happen until 2,000, which we'll say is about here. So at 2,000, we have the influence from the zero here, the positive 45 degrees per decade drops off. So we go back 
to negative 45 degrees per decade until we reach 10,000, which is about here. So it will continue to go down at negative 45. Oh, that's a little steep. Let's uh, make that a little less steep. Looks very much like our minus 90. Until about here. So that's minus 45 degrees per decade. And then finally, what happens is the negative influence from this 1,000 will drop off at 10,000. So the minus 45 degrees per decade just becomes a flat line. And because we're out of the range of all of our poles and zeros now, it will continue to not change forever. Um, these flat line values, or what the final values are, uh, can be calculated, but not accurately in this approximation, so we won't put in what they are. So these are the approximate Bode plots for the filter response, but uh, we would kind of need a little bit of a correction. So if we draw that in very quickly, this is about zero. It'll curve up a little bit. It doesn't exactly reach the peak and goes down and does about that and about that and we'll continue on to negative infinity. So at the break frequencies, the correction is about plus or minus three decibels for a pole or a zero. So up here, there's two poles and zeros, so the correction should probably be about six decibels. So the blue line is approximately what the Bode plot would look like. And then over here, we have, it should be something like this. I'm writing below it, I shouldn't be doing that. So we should have something about that. Uh, that should probably be above the line, but you get the idea. Uh, there's no sharp corners in this, so you would just kind of fit a line to this. So that is how you approximately plot the Bode plots of a transfer function. So you start with the transfer function, you find the break frequencies and the base gain, you convert everything to decibels, you create, you find the regions for your phase influence, and you know that only after break frequencies does it influence the magnitude, and then you plot them based on the influences for the uh, break frequencies, and then you do your corrections as needed. Um, I hope you guys learned something, and uh, have a good day.